Alright, welcome everyone to the Laser Guided Weapons tutorial on the Tech Practices tutorial 3 out of the series. Um, uh, thanks for joining us along today, and we will be going ahead and talking. Uh, let's do a preview of what we're going to be doing here. And we load up a GBU 12s, GBU 10s, and AGM 65V Mavericks. And we're going to go up and uh, show you how the flare works in depth in the flare, um, which is the laser targeting pod. I'm going to show you how to put the stores in the aircraft how to shoot weapons, how to use the laser target designator in two modes, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about another mode, but we're not going to use it, and I will talk about more of that later. So, uh, as I talked about in the last video, we will be doing a quick uh, startup guide. Nothing special. If you need to go see that, go to the first video. And I am very informed with these subjects, because we're out of the boring subjects now, and more cool stuff, but dropping bombs and blowing stuff up. So, uh, the first off, let's load some weapons on this aircraft. So, the easiest way to go to View's Instrument Panel Loadout Manager. And see, I already have it selected. We're going to be selecting a GBU-12 to go down, uh, down the center line of the aircraft. Um, GBU-10s to go on the uh, left and right, 8 and uh, 4 stores, and uh, 65Es to go on 3 and 9. Uh, we're not going to be needing much fuel today, so that's why I didn't load anything fuel-wise on there. So, we're going to hit Apply. And uh, there we go, now our weapons are loaded on the aircraft, and there's nothing else we need to do besides that. So as we uh, jump to the cockpit here, let's put up the ladder. Shut the canopy. Alright, uh, most of you, if you have not seen this yet, uh, this is pretty standard stuff, so uh, we're going to check, starting with the left aft panel, check the up, make sure everything's good. And uh, we're at this point now where I don't even need to say... Uh, what we're checking for just the uh, big items, which is going to be the parking brake, anti skid on, flaps are auto, um, lights are on, uh, jettison select is, in, is pulled out and in a safe position, uh, canopy jettison handle is fully forward, the uh, jettison button is pressed out, the uh, master arm switch is into safe position, DDIs are off, HUDs are off, um, our ejection seats into the safe position. Our bleeds are off. I don't know why those are on. Our countermeasures are off. Our hook is up. Wings are in the hold position for this setup. Uh, radar is off. Flare is off. Laser strike designator is off. And LST is off. And the uh, a, uh, the ITT is um, in the nav position. Alright, so uh, let's turn on the uh, battery here and do our normal fire drill. Engine fire. And I will, uh, Engine this will kind of be a standard thing each video, as I'll talk fire. about right. uh, any changes fire. to the right. previous videos. APU now, fire. on the VRS forums, APU I did fire. actually get a couple comments from uh, real Leader. Navy Leader. pilots who actually gave me a couple things, Leader. and uh, right. I've been teaching you how to land Leader. with the AOA, right. not how the Navy does it, but how the Air Force does it. So I'll teach you the Navy way when we come in the land today. Um, another thing he pointed out was there's a couple buttons I'll teach you about being the advanced avionics tutorial. Um, besides that, we, we were pretty good last time. There's a couple things I'll probably talk about through the video, but for right now, uh, startup is fine, he said, so uh, let's keep going. Alright, so it's B. Engine fire, left, engine fire, left, engine fire, right, engine fire, right, APU fire, APU fire, lead air, left, Lead air, left. Lead air, right. Lead air, right. Alright, there we go. So our brick fire test is in the normal position. Cycle the battery switch. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and start the left engine today, actually. First, before we do that, we have to start the APU. No accumulation light, start the APU. Wait for a green light, which we have now. So left and right in the opposition bleeds off. APU bleed on. Engine crank left. Before we did that, we should have looked for people, but it's at the sex. So 50% RPM. Left throttle goes in the auto position.
Ring air conditioner is kicking on. Uh, right engine crank, right generator on. There we go. Oh, well, I'll put it a little prematurely, but uh, throttle in our position at 15% RPM. There's the red engine. Alright, so uh, we start turning our DDIs and HUD and everything on. Alright, there we're going to check our, our ECAS, which says our bleeds are off. Easy fix. We're going to turn the APU off now. Our wing off la ladder keeps coming out on the way. Wait right here. Easy dock when I go back in, because once my default to go to the cockpit, and it'll open the canopy if I go back. There we go. Okay, that's enough time. Alrighty here. So, uh, standard stuff for, uh, everything's going to be standard until we get in the air, so. Uh, FCS. Now, I'm not going to go through each time and tell you what you need to look for in these displays. Uh, go back in the first video if you're just watching this. Um, and you should, uh, by point, you should write these down and put them like a sticky note, and, uh, if you have trouble, remember them. All the uh, stuff, like the engine stuff, you need to watch. It's in the parameters and the uh, FCS stuff. Alright, so we're good now. We can go ahead and start taxi. First we do that. We check a couple things. And NWS in high mode. Let's check. Put the flaps in half. Uh, ejection seat is armed. You never know when you're going to need it. Uh, we're going to select our trim. And we are set to go. And now uh, we're going to turn everything off in the UCF here. I finally got rid of differential braking, yay. So our uh, flight plane today is going to be like the one we had, almost like the one we had yesterday. We're going to take off and uh, turn left actually and go over to the practice fields. I know I said I was going to do that last time, but I didn't do it, but we'll do it this time because I kind of need them. Let's turn the head on. We'll get a red hue going since we're using weapons today. Alright, that's good. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't know where that switch is for the trench color to have this on here, it's hue. Uh, you can go all the way up to a blue and all the way back to a red. And everything in the middle. So you can do like a black or anything though. You can do like a yellow, green. Green's the standard. Green's easiest to see, but I went kind of like red. At this point, if you wanted to, you can uh, we can go ahead and turn the flare on the radar on the standby mode to uh, okay, go ahead and get them started to warm up. Even though I don't have realistic uh, simulating radar on, which I will turn on once we get to the advanced tutorials. I'll turn Gentai reset up and show you how to restart from that, start from that, and everything in the advanced tutorials. Right now I have all the simple options set.
Thresher texting here. Thanks, guys, for the uh, very good feedback on the YouTube videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, this gives me motivation, motivation to do more of these. The uh, stream haven't gotten as many viewers um, as like I did on my way previous streams, but uh, I kind of see that because I'm doing this weird times of the day, and I don't really care as long as I get some really good uh, views and audience on the YouTube videos. And I usually stream usually from 8 to uh, 10, anywhere in between those time frames on a normal weekday. Okay, on that runway, let's do our stand checklist for takeoff. NWS to low. Makes a spread. Uh, pull up the head. Alright, controls, wings, trim, flaps, hook, harnesses, warning lights, and WS low, C is armed. Okay, let's go. A little more gas to get this thing off the ground this time, since I uh, remember we do have weapons, so we're much heavier than we were when we took off uh, in the first two tutorials. Gear up. Uh, this kind of takeoff I'm doing right now is kind of the own, own kind of procedure I set up. Where we gain some speed yeah. and uh, kind of gain up some speed. Then we get to the speed of climb. There we go. I gotta get a new stick. That's why I'm like the airplane shaking everywhere. There we go, right. we're going to turn right, and uh, we're going to start turning on the flare and radar on, even though we do not need the radar. Also, the laser target doesn't earn the LST, can I come on to the opposition? We're only going to be using the LTD, which is laser target des designator. We're not going to be using the LST today. Alright, well, once we roll over here, I'll go ahead and turn on the uh, alpha. And uh, before we go ahead and get right into uh, the deep of uh, stuff here, uh, so you're going to turn on roll mode. There we go. Alright, we're going to talk about the flare a little bit. This is the uh, flare, which is a laser target designator. It pretty much has that software in it, LST is in it, which is uh, laser search. Um, so we're going to start up in the upper left hand corner. We see APR is operational, that means the flare is working. Uh, we come down here, this is our, actually, that's not the view you usually be seeing. This would be, this is changing the brightness of the display. This is changing the, uh, the contrast of the display. And right here, once if we hit the ZFW, the button right next to it, it changes the zoom and focus mode. Focus really has no effect at this point in time on the super bug, but the zoom does. Uh, Zoom does work fully functional. This will be coming in probably and most likely in the Pro version. It's very hard to do in FSX because you can't really accurately model that. And if we uh, go back to normal mode, it's like ALG, which is pretty much automatically uh, corrects your brightness and contrast to give you the best possible view. And uh, it goes to the zoom and focus page by default. So if we unbox that, we can we can have full control over it again. I usually keep it boxed. Uh, the white and black mode. Uh, black mode is easier to see at night. I prefer white in the day. LST mode. Uh, it's more of an advanced tutorial type item. But essentially what this is, is uh, I can... Another, say, if I have the Mavericks and another airplane does not have Mavericks, but he has his flare already on the target because he's watching it, he does not need for me to find, try to find the target. All he has to do is start lacing that target. And I can use this function of the flare to search for that laser energy on that target. And all I have to do is put this page up and uh, select my search method here, which well, I'll talk about in the advanced puppet tutorial how to do this. I have to get another airplane to do it with me now. And um, find that laser en energy. And I can use that to program my Maverick to follow that. And that will, uh, my Maverick will follow that. So instead of me trying to find the target, I can just fire the weapon in a, a laser from another airplane can guide that to its target. Uh, LST mode, if I have that boxed, it comes up. Uh, that's what that is. But if I turn LST mode off back here, 
uh, the box goes away because it's no longer function. It cannot function because it's off. Um, now, if we do declutter mode, it takes away everything on the display so we can clearly see the target. That's if you're investigating something. It's very nice. For, it's very nice. Uh, that's what that is. Uh, gray mode is your trait. Gray scale to test the display and make sure it's working properly. UFC mode, you can change the code, uh, the laser code, so you won't fire the missile. That's some more of the advanced avionics tutorial. Also, back, uh, by default, it's fine. You don't have to mess with it. And VVSL is what I have it on now, which will follow the aircraft's uh, vector on the HUD. That's pretty much where the aircraft's pointed, and that's where the floor is going to be focusing on. That's where the floor is going to be focusing. Very nice little feature. Use it a lot. Uh, that displays and hides the RTCL, which is a radical. TV mode, uh, LA, LA mode is when at night, if you um, cannot see it, if you don't have night vision on board, and you need to use the flare, that's what that is for right now, keep it on TV. Um, this is your uh, view aspect, so we go medium, FOV, that means you do not have a very good angle of view. Uh, narrow is very narrow, and you see the radical changes for each setting. So that one's kind of like a your standard. It's a little smaller, and it's like a little tiny bit of grass here. Uh, for this video, keep on WMOV, which is wide field of view. Let's go ahead and swing the airplane back around here. Uh, the ATC on fail in the left EDI is saying that uh, my alpha alert just failed, which is fine for me. Now, uh, we're going to try to head back to the targets here. We kind of got sidetracked, and uh, now we're way far away. But uh, I'll talk about some more things as we approach the target from this direction. There we go. We're all at right here. And we'll set our heading for 200. Zero, zero. Bolts hold. There we go. Okay. Now, as I talked about in the last video, oops. as I talked about in the last video, we can use the HUD, the radar, anything to program the floor to look at a target. For this video, since we're doing laser targeting, I'm only going to use the floor to find the target. I can use the HUD, and if I select the target with the HUD, it'll automatically program the floor to follow that target. Now, I'll show you some maps. So, we're going to go Castle, Red Arrow. To put our castle switch on the right EDI, as you see for this diamond in the upper right corner. And now we have full, if we move the arrow keys, we have full access control of the, um, uh, of the floor. Now, simple floor function, say if, see if, if you look how I'm moving here, if I let go of the floor, it's moving. All I have to do is center it, I say control U, it automatically stabilizes that. And, uh, that's when I can like a target. It's not that it has not designated a target yet. All it is doing is focusing on that, so I can do a little more final, uh, fine things without the airplane moving. How to get rid of it? Control R. That automatically un uh, unstabilizes the flirt. And I don't know what the hell my airplane is doing. There we go. Hold that out. It's too far, good buddy. Okay. Okay. And uh, the to stabilize the floor control, use the cage button. Um, for the weapons control, you that's a cage. If you're on the floor display, and that that function only works if the floor is under the water line, under the horizon, pretty much per se. All right, so I'm gonna actually clear the weather right here real quick. There we go. Now we can see our targets a little better. This video. I hit shift delete if you want to once on the floor display um, to recenter it. Alright, so we're going to take off VVSL mode. Move it down here. And we're going to try to find it. There it is, right there. We're going to hit control U to stabilize the floor. We're going to zoom in a little bit here. Boom. Alright, our target is designated. I hit enter. That to designate that target. Now, wherever I go, the floor will try to look at that target. Now, if you see the screen go black and say mask, 
that means it's called fuselage masking. And what that does is, it's when that floor cannot see the target because the airplane itself is in the way. Because if you turn right, like, if I turn out right, a real easy example, the airplane's upside down, it cannot see through the wing, so you'll get a mask message. As we approach the target, I can free, refine that uh, targeting right there. And now I have a direct center shot. Alright, so enough of that. Now we're going to talk about air to ground weapons in the store page. Right now we're in navigation mode because air, air and air to ground mode are not selected and the uh, arm switches into the safe position. We're going to select air to ground. I already have my flare set up so it's not going to jump to the radar. Once I, if I select that and my flare is not selected, it will jump, or the radar is not selected, it will automatically jump to uh, the radar. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to fire is the Maverick. It may be. It says hold right now. And what what that is, is it has, it's, the flare needs a 20, uh, about 30 second warm up time to get the gyros moving in the missile to, um, to pretty much short them. After that 15, 30 seconds, I can fire the missile. But if you switch to another weapon, it'll it'll uh, release power from the Maverick, which means you have to rewarm warm it up. So keep, uh, when you're programming and doing your tactics to try to hit a target, remember, it needs 30 seconds to warm up. So, uh, and this is our missile launch code, 11111. That's what it's programmed for, for UFC. We can change that to like 1, 0, 0, now it's 0, 0. We'll decrypt that. Boom. Done. We're going to keep it on 111 for today. That's more of an advanced tutorial thing. There it goes, it's going back. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk. There's two methods to fire a Maverick. Now once we get around and the floor pops back up, I'm going to talk about the first way, which is the pretty much the automatic way. Now if I... the floor is already on the target, so if I hit control left arrow and put my castle switch on the left DDI, once I have the target in sight, I can hit control U. And what that will do is it will... Uh, it will uncage this missile. And what that will do is automatically start raising the target over here. Actually, I need a little bit more refined and screwed it up. Hang on. You see right there, I accidentally uncaged it. That's another way to do it, is if uh, on the Mac, as you select the target with the Maverick page open, it automatically start raising the target show you to cage the missile again. And uh, the basic concept of caging and uncaging is caging is when the missile is hooked up to the aircraft's avionics. Uncaging is when the missile is on its own. I'll talk, that's very important with air-to-air uh, -air weapons, uh, especially sidewinders. I will talk about that more later. Um, but control you will uncage the missile, start lasing, and the head of the missile will start looking for that laser. And uh, in caged mode, it's it's hooked up to the airplane, so the missile head is not looking at anything. So, as we approach the target, I can show you on the Maverick display. I will get a crosshair and a white... Uh, here, I'll pause. And a white uh, square. That white that square is... um, it, it, it found the laser energy, and that's laser energy. So what I want to do is put that pretty much white square in the center of these crosshairs. And um, that that will give me the pretty much the best shot angle, as long as it's in this circle and actually not below this line, which is a 20 degree line. Um, you can fire the missile, but it's better if you fire it right here at very close range, just because it'll give it its best accuracy possible. Um, now this right here would be a satisfactory shot for me. I could shoot that right now; I would have no problem with it. But um, just try to get as close as you can, as quick as you can, for say. All right. So what it is, uncaged the missile. So the missile has found the energy, and if it has not found the energy, and this has not been, and this has not uh, lased the target yet, which will get as an X, and that means it, c it has not found the uh, laser energy yet. So right now on the on the head, we have zero laser, which means it is uh, light firing AGR, which means the missile is on cage, ready to go, and. Uh, Okay, okay, day is crossed out right now because we have not fired the missile. Not arm the missile. Whoops! All right, there we go. No, I screwed up right there. I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. Uh, well, we got a crossed out method 
uh, before we shot the missile was because I forgot to arm the uh, weapon. And that's, a very, that's another thing of safety thing that Zerpline has in it is it will not fire the missile unless it switches into the arm position. Um, so I'm always remember to do that because I've had a couple scenarios. I sorry I screwed that up in the tutorial, but it's a very good example how VRS modeled and how the airplane model in the real life is a very safe airplane as in when I shoot the missile unless it switches into the arm position. So the missile's away, and uh, most people do not believe it, but once the missile's away, if I see, oh crap, um, my my target's slightly misaligned, see, I can still fix that, but only for a very short time period, because remember, I'm firing a laser on the ground and the missile's following that laser. If it, the laser position changes slightly, the missile will just correct for that. Um, it's, a very, it's very common for me to do that so that, uh, once we get closer to target, to change it. But if the missile said it's pretty much the last second to impact, it will not change its path. It will not have enough time. So uh, remember that. So I'm, what I'm going to do here when I unpause is quickly um, just give a couple left arrow keys so I can re realign with that target. There we go. Now what I did is actually fired again. So I can fire another Maverick right now because I just realigned and uh, got another one ready. So there's one. See on the floor, there's one, there's two. So we have fired two Mavericks at the target, two have hit. There we go, very good. Alright, now we're going to have a little more fun with bombs. Uh, bombs pretty much work the same way. Um, but for this mode, I'm going to show you another way to fire them. And this works with the Maverick too, which is called Trig Mode. And what that is, is I can actually f um, fire the laser with the can with my trigger on the, my trigger stick. And, um, and if you have the gun selected on the stores page, it automatically deselect the gun because remember, there's a pickle switch and there's a gun. There's a trigger. The trigger is used for any air-to-air -air missile and um, gun and the gun in whatever mode. So if I um, if it, it'll in the air ground mode, if I'm trying to drop a bomb and use uh, trig mode, which is pretty much when I hold down the trigger, is firing the laser. And as long as I hold that down, the laser firing. Once I let go of the trigger, the uh, laser will stop firing. So I'll sh demonstrate that now, real quick. So if you have your gun selected, I'll magically deselect the weapon. I like this mode actually because it gives you a little more control over what you can do. So what I do is, uh, if you see dud on my head just then, it means we were too low to drop the bomb. The bomb would not have enough time to arm itself before we hit the ground. Alright, so we're going to turn on trick mode. And now, this is pretty much just like an auto bomb release. I have on auto, I'm going to... Here. I'm going to demonstrate other modes once we get the dumb bomb, like CCIP and uh, manual mode, and uh, flight director mode. But we're just going to be using auto mode today. Um, and also, uh, we're only going to be dropping one bomb. The My dumb bomb tutorial, I'll show you how to drop multiple bombs, multiple bombs, within a certain distance apart from each other, stuff like that. Um, but today we're just going to be dropping one bomb, auto mode. Easy, easy, um, easy to do, very easy. Now I'll, I'll show you this page, I should have shown you this earlier, but we're pretty close to target right now. Mode changes this from auto mode to CCIP to flight director, whatever. Talk about that more later. If it's not, if it's in any other mode than auto, select that button a couple times until you see auto. What I have now is 84LG. Yeah, that's right. Um, I was, it's actually GBU-10 selected. It's a laser guided bomb. So, um, let's see this big bomb right here. It's a 2,000 pound bomb. A very effective, very cool. Um, love this bomb. My favorite. JDM's, I like the JDM more, but it's a 2,000 pound bomb. It'll kill anything you put pretty much target with. 82LG is my other weapon. This is my 1,000 pound laser guided bomb. So I'll show you the automatic laser targeting. Oh, wait, that's not trick mode later. But, um, so, uh, in a uh, flare LTD, that means my flare, which is on kind of my left fuselage, that means it is firing its laser. That, if it's not firing its laser, it'll just say flare. These are my other stations. As you see, I had Mavericks uh, loaded on the airplane, but I already shot them, so it says zero, zero. I have one bomb at each station, so it says one bomb, one bomb at each station. So, um, if I hit the step switch, it'll cycle the weapon. I can select this weapon. Uh, I can select this weapon instead of this one for whatever reason. Um, 
the airplane, if first say, if I had a Maverick still in this wing, it'll automatically select this bomb to try to level out the weight a little bit. It'll automatically do that. I never ch touch it. Other things we have on this page is the UFC. That's uh, the change the quantity of how many bombs you want to drop and how many bombs you want to drop at one time. Um, that's what that is. Uh, another dumb bomb tutorial video. Uh, don't need to worry about today. Step I just talked about. These are your weapons you have. This is the uh, mode you're in. Program. Uh, dumb bomb tutorial. I'll show you. Uh, it's a little different. If it's one, if it's anything different from one one, select that button until it says quantity one multiple one. Um, data is going to be your target and uh, where you're at right now. That's going to be pretty much. I already showed you that in the tactical video of uh, what the weapon is, what the target, where the target is, the range from it, etc. Uh, pretty. I just like keep it on this display though. So uh, right here, when the countdown goes to eleven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the trigger, pull the trigger, that'll fire the laser. And um, once my release mode is hit zero seconds, I will hit the pickle button, release the weapon. Now, um, I'm going to continue to hold down the trigger until I see an impact. Once I see an impact of the bomb who has hit the target, I can let go of the trigger because I no longer need to laser the target. Now, so I'll show you that in real time now. Alright, seven seconds. I usually like five seconds premature. Fire the laser. There it is. Two, one. Drop the bomb. Bombs away. Alright, I'm gonna hold that trigger down until I see an impact on the right DDI. This will give you a cool bomb effect too. Where is it? Looking for it. Looking for it. Boom. Now I'll show you the uh, bomb effects. These are pretty cool. They just updated them. It's FSX at war. Bomb effects. They're pretty cool. Uh, better than the last ones. There's yeah, even a sound too. If you heard it, it's like a boom, and it's it's pretty cool. So you're dropping multiple bombs at a lower altitude to hear that sound. All right, we'll drop the other one. Same method. I'll show you in real time. and will not pause the same anymore. No, no, but I want to hit that. A4 LG. Same bomb I just dropped. New target though. We're gonna select that uh, other big target right here. He just massacred that little target with two Mavericks and a freaking 2,000 pound bomb, so. So we're going to do this, we're going to hit, we're going to cast a switch to the floor, shift delete. Now for me, trig mode, uh -oh. 6 seconds, 5 seconds, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, 2 seconds, hold and trigger, drop the bomb. Alright, so laser target designate is flashing on the right display. That is saying I am losing the target. I'm going to keep that on there. Keep pulling the trigger. Keep pulling the trigger. Once it selects, boom. Hit the target. Perfect. Look over for now. See L arm on the flare, that means the laser is not firing. Alright. So, one more weapon tutorial. Uh, one more weapon to shoot here, and I would uh, show you the normal method. I will not use trick mode. I just show you the normal way to drop the bomb. Trick mode is really fun to use if you're uh, trying. It's, it's, it's a lot more fun to use because you're actually doing more. You're trying to pull the trigger at the same time, laser the target, you usually won't feel what you're doing, and uh, to delete, pretty much all you have to do to cancel that bomb is to let go of the trigger and that bomb will disarm, and it will just pretty much is a dumb bomb, and it will not hit, it will not explode. All you have to do is release the trigger, and boom, the bomb's dead. A lot more feeling of control with that. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to put a little range in front, uh, a little bit of range in between us and the target. Okay, so trick mode is not selected. I see that's the airplane right there. Uh, it's probably going to mask. There it goes. So trick mode is not selected. I have auto mode selected for this bomb. Same uh, way of delivery for this weapon. It's not any different than the other bomb we just dropped. I just said uh, once we have zero seconds, I'll release the bomb. So do it for this bomb is hit the pickle switch. That's all I have to do. And uh, flare will automatically start firing the laser. Three, two, one. 
drop. There we go. It's just already targeting. My hands off the joystick right now. Don't have to do anything. It automatically delays the target for me. There we go. That one is actually not as accurate. It's probably didn't give enough time. Oh, it's still yeah, it was accurate as crap. <laughs> Just the effects on the floor didn't really catch up with it when I paused the sim. Whatever. All right. As you see, the laser was still firing after the fact. Um, and the trig mode, I can just lose the trigger. It's not firing the laser anymore. All right. So that's pretty much it for uh, firing laser guided weapons. Um, in the chat, if you guys got anything you guys want to know, put it in there. I'm going to take it in for landing now. Um, first things first, though, we leave target designator off, flare blue off, radar off. Okay, now we're going to get that checklist. And uh, for me, I like to put up the uh, ADI. I will explain a little bit. I'm not the best one to explain it. I'm going to go on the VRS forms and see if I can find a video on it a little better explaining it, but I'm going to do the best to see what the real Navy pilot said for me to do, which is pop on the forms, the VRS forms, the actually retired Navy pilot, but um, is that sort of, uh, I'll show you what he told me to do when landing. If, oh yeah, see, I forgot to tell you this, but uh, we still have the target selected, so if we go to the, I don't know, the flare's not on. <laughs> Turn the flare on real quick so I can show you this how you would normally get rid of the target. Wait for it to come back online quickly. Now he said he used to take in a lineup with a runway too. I'm not going to do that this here because we have no crosswind. He said it's very useful for crosswind landings and you guys haven't taught you how to use take ins yet. So um, this will just be a simple visual approach. Nothing special. on it just masking so all I have to do is shift delete two times to recenter it boom it's good no target in the airplane anymore off target's gone no target in that right corner of the display there we go new paint new uh, paint job on the airplane so this is a VFA 190 my color my airplane pretty much Yeah, airplane. Alright, 250 knots, so I'll go ahead and lower the gear trip to flaps. There we go. Uh, flip the hook bypass the field. I'll turn the landing light on for this video. Go. We're kind of nosing it on over here. Another cool thing, uh, just trying to show you there. The speed brakes only work when you're uh, above 250 knots and the flaps and gear up. That's the only time it would ever work. Just kind of a tip, per se. Once I get the line up to the runway and show you, I'll go ahead and uh, show you what he's talking about, and what he was talking about when he emailed me. Dispensers are off, wheels are down, flaps are down, hook is up, empty skid is on, dispensers are off, and harnesses are fastened, I guess. 
can't really uh, do that. All right, pull the nose up. Try to get it away things here. I'll go ahead and explain it right now. All right. So what I talked about last in the first video was that the uh, use your throttle to keep the speed and try to to keep your speed as it was, and um, that's how you keep the air away. Because if you're at a good speed, the nose will be at a certain angle. How the Navy guys told me to do it is uh, use your throttle for pretty much adjusting your altitude, and all, and just use your nose. Just keep moving your nose up and down to try to keep your air away at the correct degree for your speed. Um, also, keep in check the speed. You don't want that to drop or climb the same way that I taught you. Just that minute differences is that you use the nose to change your airway and your throttle to uh, adjust your climb. That's, that's pretty much it. That's all he said. <laughs> so uh, I'll try to find a video and try to explain it a little better once I can. I think that was a decent landing. Okay, flaps up. Yeah, my brakes work this video. Yay, I'm not sliding all over the place. Alright, flaps are coming up. Nose wheel high. Oh, landing light off. Standard stuff. Next tutorial uh, will be one of the last videos at Fallon, um, except for the weapons tutorials. All the land, pl actually, take that back. All the land uh, tutorials will be at Fallon.
Alright, sorry about that. We are now on the ground. We can uh, go and shut our engines off like we did last time. Bleed air's off. Right. Left generator off. Lights off. Alright, seats in safe mode. All the DDI's off. Hood off. Simple stuff. Stuff we've been doing forever. Seems like. Alright, canopy's open. ladders down and that's exactly how we left off when we started the video so uh thanks guys for watching uh uh do your normals you know what's going on next video will be gps and radar guided bombs weapons whatever you want to call it uh next video will probably be a very weird video because i actually probably start in the air because uh, we got to be a long ways away because we'll be doing um like uh long range over the horizon uh guided bombs and stuff like that, like slammers, uh, harpoons, not harpoons, yeah, that would be in the advanced weapon, because that missile's really hard to learn, but, uh, stuff like that we'll be doing, we'll also be doing JDAMs, and that's when we get closer, and we'll be, uh, switching over to JDAMs, so thanks guys for watching, uh, do your normals, have fun, have a good night, or morning, or whenever you're watching this, uh, see you later.